brown. Uh, no, 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 not that. <laughs> but I know that, but uh, uh, most people. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kao Sports. With me today is uh, Rajiv Rupaleria, uh, one of the biggest names in uh, motor rallying in Uganda. Uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Rajiv. Thank you very much, and thank you for wanting to host me on your show. All right. Uh, first things first, who is Rajiv Rupalelia? Well, Rajiv Rupalelia was born in 1990. Uh, my parents, my mom is Joshna Rupalelia, who was also born in 1957, uh, and son of Sudhir Rupalelia, who was born in 1956. Uh, both of them were born in Uganda. My mom was born in Kamuli. Busoga, this Busoga area, and my dad was born in Kabatoro, which is next to the in the west of Uganda, next uh, touching Lake Lake Katwe. Okay. Yes, from Kasese S side. So, do you speak any of the languages? Busoga, all uh, the languages from Kasese. Um, I've not been able to pick it up as much as I would have liked to. Because really, I, I was educated, majority of my life was in international school, and then I went, I left Uganda and went to a boarding school at age nine. Uh, so I was, I was educated in Uganda till I was about nine years old. And then I think my dad wanted me to be away from the, the, the knowledge of what we have around us. And therefore, a decision, family decision was taken to send me to boarding school uh, so that I can build a sense of independence uh, away from what our family is in Uganda, uh, to be able to learn how to survive on my own two feet, uh, how to deal with people, how to learn, and to build a greater network out in a global community. Okay, so uh, what about uh, when did you join motor rallying and uh, who are the people that inspired you? Well, motor rally has always been a part of me. Um, I've always followed, well, I used to follow a lot of F1. Um, and back in the day, I used to follow a lot of the old legendary drivers, such as Chipper Adams, uh, Manuel Pato, Riaz Kurji, the late, uh, the late uh, Moses Lumala, uh, and the late Mwanji. Uh, those, that was in 90, between 94 and, say, 2002. Uh, during that period and uh, so I always had a love for motorsports. I always had a love for speed uh, Driving uh, since I was about four years old. I've been driving buggies when we were developing speak resort Munyonyo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think that picture came out one day um, on, on in the media and uh, So my love for motorsports has always been there. I joined motorsports in 2019 mid so I think this is now, sorry, 2018 mid. So uh, it's three years now? Yeah, but I wouldn't count 2020 as a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because I think we did one event. Yeah, that was, was it in Masaka or Barara? Mas uh, Barara and Masaka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, took place. Masaka was actually cancelled. Yeah, 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 it was in Barara first. Barara, Barara was the first rally. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then after that it was Sem Sem Semabule, where we went to. That was the second event of the season. And then uh, the lockdown hit. In. Then the lockdown hit. So how bad has been the pandemic to motorsport generally, and of course your team in particular? Well, look, I think the the lockdown has highly highly affected motorsports. But I think actually motorsports all around the world has been allowed to continue. If you look at Kenya or neighboring countries, yeah, yeah, the yeah, events yeah. are running. If you look at Burundi, the events are running. Uh, it's only in Uganda where we fail to get on our feet and accept this is the new normal. And the good thing with motorsports is, is, is we don't, we're not confined within a certain yeah, space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are quite much out in the open public. We're not like basketball. Uh, or football where you have a confined uh, stadium were quite open uh, and uh, it's been quite mis unfortunate that the federation has not got on its feet and worked together with government to follow the SOPs and ensure that we get moving again because a lot of people's livelihoods yeah, 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 are yeah, yeah. based on motorsports 
And uh, a lot of people have had to be laid off, downsized, because unfortunately, if we are not racing, sponsors are not on board, uh, sponsors are not sponsoring the sport. Therefore, people's livelihoods in terms of sponsoring teams, sponsoring drivers, sponsoring yeah, events. Even the mechanics are not working. All, all that is dead at the moment. Yeah. Um, so it's very unfortunate that a lot of people are suffering at the moment. And we really need to see a way of working together with the government uh, as drivers and the federation and the clubs to see how to reopen because this is the new normal. As drivers and of course the federation, have you tried to push this to the government level through the Ministry of Education and Sports? I think the and federation the has, uh, as well. but realistically it's not the driver's level, it's, it's the club level. So clubs need to put pressure on to, the, club com the club's community needs to put pressure on to the federation and federation needs to move faster with government and say, okay, if we're going to open, what are the rules and regulations we need to follow? Not just to say, because you see, COVID has changed everything. It's changed the way we live, it's changed the way we eat, it's yeah, changed our sector. social aspects, it's yeah, changed yeah, yeah. Our, our entertaining aspects. Um, so this is the new normal, and this is, if this is a new normal, then the, the question is, what is the new normal for motorsports that we need to follow? Give us those guidelines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's work hand in hand to draft up some guidelines, and let's follow those guidelines. Because just like any other sport, if football was allowed to operate, I can't see why motorsports is not allowed to operate. I agree with you. And then, uh, how are you keeping yourself on form uh, during this lockdown? Because it, anytime soon they may say, we are back. Well, I, I think what, what I've been doing is I've been participating in a couple international events uh, in Kenya. Sorry, if you don't mind, I'll put my sunglasses on. The sun is hitting my eyes. Yeah, it's okay. Um, what we've done is that, uh, personally, as me and my team, we made sure the car is ready. The car was rebuilt. It was completely disassembled and rebuilt. It gave us a chance to do that. We also managed to look at a lot of the small faults and things that were not going so well. And we managed to, to rectify all those. We managed to build a few things on the car to protect, for example, the, the oil sump, because Evo 10s have a very vulnerable oil sump. Mm. We managed to build a bracket that helps protect it a bit better in case of any knock. Uh, we've also been able to get out and do some practice. Within uh, Uganda? Yes, in Uganda. Yeah. Uh, because practicing is not Yeah, yeah it's not stopped, rally. And it's, it's not, not a rally, event. it's not a public yeah. event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as long as I can find a private farm, mm. a private land, mm. uh, get the health and safety officials there, and I do my practicing to be able to refine on, 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 on my skills. And then uh, you made two trips to Kenya and uh, what was the experience like and uh, what should Uganda just copy from Kenya especially in terms of organization and maybe the driver themselves well I, I think you said it all I think it's it's the organization uh, firstly if you there are many aspects we need to learn from Kenya I think one of the aspects is the the driver's discipline in, in, in Kenya drivers are very very committed to the sport they're not just committed in terms of driving and mm. entertainment. Mm. They're committed in the prerequisites the event or the, the day takes. Mm. That goes to your diet, your mental health, uh, your fitness levels, uh, your practicing, the amount you practice and the seat time you have. And also to be able to get people from a global standard yeah. to come and teach us here. Mm. Sometimes in Uganda, we think we know it all. Yeah, yeah. We have a bad attitude like that. Uh, As Ugandans, we think, ah, oh, this is Uganda, we can do it our way. But I'll tell you, there's a reason why some countries uh, Fabio. are where they are in rally, and there's yeah. a reason why we are where we are in rally. So if you want to play and get on an international uh, uh, yeah, recognition, yeah, yeah, yeah. You first need to get international, global people who are to that standard to come and teach us to do, first of all, something called catch-up. Mm. When we do something called catch-up, we then come on a level playing field. Once you're on that level playing field, then it's to nurture the talent from there to be able to compete with that international talent. Right? And that doesn't cost money. It, co it costs bringing people together. You know, there are even people there who want to come and help us because uh, they have time. Yeah, uh, maybe sometimes it's about the connections. The connections, correct. Mm. And connections can be made anywhere, anytime. 
It's about reaching out also, you know. But it's about us having a clear agenda of where we need to take this. But uh, the other thing I, I learned from the Kenyans a lot is, is, is uh, a lot is, is the way their, their service park is organized, mm. you know. Their service park is, is, is phenomenal. The way they're coordinated, the administration they have in place, uh, by the time the car comes into service, they already know what needs to be done. To the point where all the parts are ready, the are crew really knows exactly who's doing what, yeah, 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 how's yeah. doing where. Um, and the coordination is much better. So by the time the car comes in, they can even rebuild a whole car uh, within a one-hour service. They can dismantle the whole car and rebuild it. Um, so I think th these are crucial things in terms of organization we need mm. to learn. And you see, once you're to that level of organization, other things start falling in place. Um, also, I think the last thing is the events organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Kenyans are, are fantastic. I think they've had a very, a very good boost with the, with the WRC going to Kenya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's shown them the level and the standard they need to obtain in order to be able to go to the level of competing with uh, such an international platform. And, and I'm so proud of the Kenyans. To be honest, I think we had three Kenyans at the top 10 of WRC. Yeah. What, what an achievement for them, you know? And, and, and they go through the scrutineering uh, they go through the they go through the uh, through the scrutineering day one, scrutineering day two, and and their cars were passed. In fact, I think that's another challenge here. Is <laughs> yeah, because I remember most of our drivers did fail at the scrutinery in Kenya. Correct. Yeah. But that just goes to show you that when we're doing the scrutinering in Uganda, our scrutineers are following their own standards, but not the international standards. Fudge, fudge. Uh, ish, ish. You know, <laughs> and saying ah, oh, but this is Uganda. But yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I understand this is Uganda, we love Uganda, but at the same time, Uganda needs to understand that it is where it is because of, of its, its mentality, its attitude. Yeah. If we want to go to that level, mm. we need to improve our attitude to be of that level, mm. to be able to understand that this is a global and international event. It's no longer a Ugandan event. If it's yeah. a Ugandan event, let's set our own rules and standards. But you see, F FMU is regulated by FIA. Yeah. Which means the, sta the standard should be same. Correct. But it's not been happening. Correct. Oh, and then uh, we've seen some drivers, for instance, getting the Kenyan license uh, to race in Kenya. Uh, going by what you're saying, it could be one time soon you'll be getting that Kenyan license to go and race in Kenya. I, I hope not. I really hope not. But you see, at the end of the day, I, 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 I as a driver, I'm not being subsidized by anybody. Yeah. There's a big problem with having the corporate culture engaged in motorsports. But if you look at F1 globally or mm. uh, Rally WRC internationally, mm. they have huge sponsors. Yeah. And there's no reason why we can't find the relevant sponsors in Uganda. But again, it goes back to our disorganization. Yeah, nobody wants to be a part of something that's, that's disorganized. That's disorganized. Yeah, 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 yeah. If something is, if I know there are 13 events or 10 events in the year and I have a sponsor, as FMU or Federation, my number one core objective is to make sure all of those events run. Yeah. Once they're running, my second, my second most important thing is the health, safety, and, ex and, the, and the whole experience that is created for the consumers, for the fans. Because without the fans, you don't collect money. Of course. Without the fans, you have no influence. Yeah. Without the fans, you should come on a lot of things. Right? So yeah. the fans are the most important part in this whole aspect. And, and as long as you build a fan base, and Federation of Motorsports has one of the biggest fan bases in sports in Uganda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't know how to commercialize it. Mm. It's like, a, it's just there. How do we commercialize that, that fan base? How do we influence it? How, how do we get the, the, the petrol stations on board, the petrol import companies? How do we get the lubrication companies on board? How do we get the car motor, uh, automotive sponsorships on board? Yeah. How do you get the banks on board? Because uh, I've seen in Kenya, for instance, during the WRC, I saw the president who hold Kenyatta being part of the event. Do you think uh, government here has not done enough? Or it's because the uh, FMU has not involved government? I think it's a mixture of both. I don't think it's one or the other. I think government has not realized the value 
of FMU and the Federation of mm -hmm. Sports and the natural following we have. But I also think that the Federation has not reached out to them enough to come. You see, we should have, we should have a, a, a guest of honor for every event. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we should have a, a fountain of honor that comes, a guest of honor to our event that is going to carry a lot of weight, create a new network, and for them to appreciate what we're doing with the lit little resources we're given. Now, imagine once you're given resources, what you can then do. I understand. Because like you say, you've talked about uh, having a, a guest of honor, a big name that can influence. Uh, that's why I talked about uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. Because right. I saw him in the service park, I saw him at uh, the start of and everything there. I looked like it was always going to be a nice WRC rally. And then uh, after a few events that you never finished, you got a clean performance in Cassandra. What changed this time around? Well, look, I think I, I was quite unfortunate in my two events in Kenya. Uh, my two events, I had, I had mechanical issues with the car on takeoff. The first event, uh, I had a, uh, uh, an, an issue because of the altitude change. So the car's ECU, the computer system of the ECU wasn't reprogrammed mm -hmm. to the new altitude to perform in that right. altitude, to right. control the air intake, the airflow, uh, which basically in, entails your turbo, how much your turbo performance is, how much pressure it can give out. Uh, so the ECU was, was fiddling a bit. Eventually, we managed to get that fixed. But by then, you'd already been stuck for 20 minutes. It's very, <laughs> very difficult to yeah, catch yeah, up. Yeah. Uh, and then we, in, in a desperate attempt to try and regain time, we made some mistakes as, as driver and co-driver. Uh, the second event was a, the, I think it was the N Nakuru Rally before the, before the, uh, uh, the WRC. The WRC. I yeah. don't know. It was, it was in Nakuru, but it was a different rally. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it was in Nakuru, but it was a different rally. And what happened then was my wiper blade was not coming all the way across and it had just rained the day before and I think I was in the first section I was coming third so uh, the vision was kind of impaired my vision was about 40 percent oh, on yes. the whole right section of the vehicle uh, these can all be said as excuses but I think these are learning lessons yeah, 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 uh, yeah. for myself you know people say oh that's just an excuse or this it's okay I, I, I can take the criticism <laughs> yeah you admit but of course take lessons as well yeah yeah but you can't there's not much you can do in this in this sport it's like uh, you know in football if, if, if your if, if your car if you if your foot, foot if your shoes not working correctly you can quickly change your shoe yeah immediately once you're in the section for a rally you sort of have to make do shift till you get out of the section. Because uh, you don't want to lose too much time trying to r rectify that issue. Um, and yeah, so what happened is I hit a, I hit a, I, I cut a, a right corner too early and I damaged the right arm of the car. Oh. And I went into a very complex, a very complex stage, actually the hardest stage of the section with a broken arm. I think what I should have done is I should have chained the arm, even if I got a penalty, changed the arm. Uh, and then seeing how and maybe would have road. caught up even after the penalty. Yeah, correct. And then uh, you and your colleagues own the club. Is it CMC? Yes. And uh, it seemed to have big plans for rallying in Uganda. How far with those plans? We're, we're still on track. Uh, unfortunately, we're supposed to do our first event uh, this year, uh, which is the Boxing Day event. But the way things are looking, we, we don't know because you see, at the end of the day, my club can only be as active as it needs to be yeah. if the federation is as active as it needs mm. to be. At the moment, uh, there's no activity from the federation. And if there's no activity within the federation, of course my the club, club becomes is also absolute. Dormant. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we do have plans. We want to improve the standards. We want to see how we can improve the experience for drivers, fans, everything. And see how the overall experience of rally can be enhanced in the country. We'll try and pull a bigger fan base in as well. Um, so it, it, it's coming together. Our, our team has worked very hard to plan the event. The event was already organized. We already had all the budgets ready. Mm. We, we had the SOPs for the event ready. Mm. But really, unfortunately, we, we've not managed to do enough to get the sport opened again. So it's pending uh, as long as the sport is open. As long as the sport is open. We something on, on, on yeah. uh, Boxing Day this correct, year. Correct, correct. 
And then uh, when should we see, when do you think we should see your first NRC title? Well, it's a hard one, but I, I, I think, again, let's see when the season opens. I, I can't say when my title will be. This season has been a, an absolute dismay since last year. Actually, it's, 2020, it's 2021. two years now. Yeah, because 2020, 2021, on. nothing. No, nobody understands what's going on. Nobody knows what FMU is doing. They're not keeping open communication with the public. Um, and, and, and really, they need to do more, in my opinion. They need to do more to get the sport opened. And then, uh, should we assume that by the time everything is done, uh, your first NRC title should come in the VW Polo or some other machine? At the moment, I, I, I want to complete a full NRC championship in the Polo. That, is my, that was my plan since day one, and that continues to be my plan. Because I'm not going to buy a new car without... Without events. Yeah. Uh, no point. Well, who, who am I buying the car for? To sit at home? <laughs> Maybe to, 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 to just practice so that by the time everything is open. Uh, but of course, apart from the Vipolo, which other machines would you like to, to, to have in the near future? Well, I look, I w we're thinking about a, a Skoda or a Hyundai R5. Oh, that's a big so one. So we're talking about it, but not, nothing concrete until we know what's going on. There's no point investing money if you don't know. You see, right now, I'm even considering keeping my car in Kenya. It's cheaper for me. Instead of transporting it back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Kenya's in Kenya, open, there Kenya's are some organized, events. Yeah. Uh, e even the, the, the sections that they organize are all in private farms. So we don't have this risk of on road. We have a meet a truck on the way. We meet a border border. We see pedestrians. These are small things that really, if someone puts their mind to it, it's not very difficult to resolve them. So when you say you want to put that car permanently in Kenya, is it just for the time the events in Uganda are not working? Or, like I hinted before, you could even get a Kenyan license? Well, if Uganda is not organized, we, we, we rally with our own budgets. We rally because we love the sport. We're not sponsored. Hey. And if we're not sponsored, then it's only in our interest to really have our, our thrills fulfilled. Mm. And our thrills is driving. Yeah. So if we can't get organized here, then yes, I will ra I'll race next season in Kenya. And then uh, are we seeing you registering for the ARC very soon? Yeah, correct. But again, I'm not going to do it until I finish an NRC championship. <laughs> so, so before so, NRC, so, no ARC. Correct. Everything is a step-by-step -step process. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for me, if Uganda doesn't open up by next year, I'm going to register fully for Kenya, for the Kenyan title championship. Uh, I'm going to race all the events there. And then after that, if I finish a full season, then I would look at uh, racing uh, ARC. And I don't, know, I don't know by that time who I'd represent. And then, oh, so it could be by that time you're representing Kenya or Uganda. You never know. You never know. Okay, and then... Uh, Talking about Kenya and of course Uganda and some other countries around, do you think uh, it's all about the economy as a whole that uh, motor rallying has not have uh, had these, uh, I suppose, I say, fueling stations, lubricants, uh, automotives, and things I like that? I don't think our, our drivers and clubs have presented themselves well enough for people to want to onboard themselves. You see, rally is a business. Treat it like a business. If you treat it like a business, it will start treating and creating value like a business. Mm -hmm. At the moment, uh, most of us look at rally like charity, like we're just doing it for ourselves. The question is, if you have a sponsor, how much value are you giving them? How many yeah, new yeah, clients yeah. are you yeah. gaining them? Yeah. How much exposure are they getting by sponsoring you? Yeah. What is the potential benefits? I understand. So I treat it like that. So I've not seen so many drivers here having uh, sponsors. Uh, who are some of your sponsors? All is sole part of the Rupalelia no, But we're talking to outsiders. We've sent proposals to multiple units. We're talking to multiple people. So for us, we're, we're open. You know, we're not, we're not confined by the Rupalelia group. Right now, the Rupalelia group has done it, but it doesn't say they're going to do it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a starting platform. And then, uh, any other drivers in the team away from you and uh, your co-driver, Olinga? We're looking at it. Let's see. We'll, we'll break some news soon. So, there are plans that we could see. 
three, four cars being rallied by the Rajiv rally team. Correct. Okay. And then uh, who is that driver that you look up to in Uganda here? Maybe past or present, and of course, Africa and internationally. I think at the moment in Uganda, my favorite driver is Jazz Mungut. I think he's the most technical driver we have in the sport. Yeah. Uh, above myself, to be honest, and I have a lot to learn from him. He's been rallying for close to 15 years. Mm. Um, and, in, and in Kenya, the many, the many drivers. I've not really studied them. Um, but there's the likes of Carl Tundo, The yeah. Rise. Um, Carl Tundo is my favorite in Kenya. Yeah, he's brilliant. And he yeah. knows the, all those roads like the back of his hand. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's been racing on those roads for 18 years plus. Uh, yeah. Even uh, Boldi, uh, Boldi is extremely good. You know, and, and, and they've learned the art of rally. Not necessarily just pushing the car and being reckless, but they've learned the art of when to push, how to push, what beating the car can take, which I find very important because sometimes, and most of the time, people break down, mm. not because of, of uh, just a mechanical issue, but because they've overbeaten the car. Uh, and the car is it's like a human being. If you overuse it and you don't maintain it, it would just give in to collapse. And then uh, if everything was straight, I mean, the facilities, the sponsorship and everything, how do you rate Ugandan drivers in comparison to international ones, especially the African ones, like uh, Gary Chinese, is it from Madagascar? Yeah. And then there was the South African, I've forgotten the name. And then uh, Kao Tundo, Jas Mangat, and those other guys. Look. We've got, a, we, we've got people who are, who are potentially there. But we've also got people who like to make a lot of excuses. <laughs> Sometimes excuses are lessons, like you said. Yeah, lessons, but then let's learn from them. Yeah. Let's not keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again. Right? If, if, if we're going for a championship abroad, we should be working together. Yeah. We don't need uh, politics. Yeah. You know, politics ruins everything. Yeah. And uh, we don't accept that. So until we can accept that and say, let's run this sport in a fair manner where everybody benefits, just because I have CMC doesn't mean I don't want to see my other fellow clubs doing well. I'm more than happy for you to have your event. Mm -hmm. But if you're not going to do the right job, you shouldn't be given that event. Because it means you, are not, you don't have capacity to mm -hmm. fulfill. Mm. And this is where the federation needs to be a bit stronger about the whole aspect of who gets which event. You know, when you do, when you do a contract for government, for example, you have to put a bid security. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? You have to put a performance bond. You have to be sure of doing the job. Before you get awarded it. There must be a reason f why you get that contract. And you must have something to protect while you're running it. I understand. And the part that you have to protect is your performance bond. So to me, again, either we can keep running this thing like cowboys, or we can professionalize the sport, mm. and we can see a difference and a change. Within, within a year or two, you'll see phenomenal changes. At the end of the day, as long as the regulator sets a good... Uh, look, I'm not saying set a regulation that we cannot meet. But set standards but that set are... Set standards yeah. that, 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 that need to be fulfilled. Yeah. And, and actually... Take action on people who don't fulfill those standards. Mm. Take action. Okay, if it's a genuine mistake, sit down and discuss it. But you cannot neglect certain safety aspects that we do in Uganda. And those should not be forgiven. Because you're putting people's lives in harm. Yeah. Right? Uh, we had an incident in Jinja. That incident was avoidable. Mm. It was an avoidable incident. Why did we not do it is the question I have to ask. Yeah, you're right. Because we're compromising our own principles. You see, a, a rally driver, by the time he gets in the car, mm. I always tell people, I do dangerous things mm. in a safe way. Yeah. Okay, in the safest way. If something beyond that goes, that's God's call. Okay? Yeah. But... If you had something in your control as an organizer, yeah. say p stopping border borders coming on the road, and you can't fulfill your objective, animals, and I children, die, everything, that is ne negligence of the highest standard from you as a club. And do you think uh, some of these uh, events are 
are given to these clubs because of politics and influence, but not because they can meet their standards, in your opinion? You see, I think, I th I think they can meet the standards. They can meet their standards? They can. But because... Because the regulator is not regulated. Yeah. They're, they're obliged to just wash it off. Mm. Because the club wants to make money. Okay? Yeah. When it gets an event, it wants to make money. That's its overall objective. So it's all about getting the gut collection and things like that. And not, yeah, but get it, reduce your profit by a bit, but do a good job. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because then next year, when you do a good job, more people will come. Yeah, absolutely. Because right. uh, we've seen uh, uh, sprints. Where, for instance, stands are not on standard. We've seen people falling off the stands. And then the next year, same events happened. And of course, uh, with almost the same setting as it was before. So maybe FMU out there, uh, they should be doing something right. And then uh, a sport, uh, motorsport is one of the most dangerous sports, especially in terms of uh, danger to, to even the drivers. Uh, how confident are you? get into that car on a rally day all i can tell you is i'll make sure when i come over anything i cannot see i'm ready to go into the bush i've got that mentality because i would rather go into the bush than destroy destroy someone's life yeah so, you, so there's always a fear of how hard i can push the accelerator yeah right where if you put me in kenya i don't have a fear on how hard i push the accelerator because i know at the end of the day the only risk is me and my co-driver yeah Right? And uh, we are well secured within the safety equipment we have. Uh, so I can take that risk. But uh, here... But here you, you're ready to lay off at any There are animals, there are children crossing. Borders, borders, trucks. Yeah. And really, it's not that difficult to, to stop this. You know, I even hear like, in Kenya you get people, volunteers. But even the volunteers have to have discipline. Yeah. There's no point coming and being a volunteer and being a nuisance. Better you leave. Mm. Here, when you have volunteers, they think they're entitled. They think you owe them something. Yeah, I've seen. But you, you are doing the sport a favor <laughs> because you want to grow the sport. Yeah, I've seen Sami, was it in uh, Kavale Gahoima? And then I wasn't impressed with most of them. And then uh, any rituals you do before rallying on a, a rally day? I do a bit of exercise, uh -huh. stretching, uh -huh. neck strengthening. Mm. Uh, and just really something, everything to keep calm, keep everybody out of my mind and just focus on the, the car and the race and the track. You see, growing up, they used to tell us that uh, before a rally driver gets into that car on a rally day, he must leave a will behind because you never know he may not return. Uh, how true is that? I don't do any of that. Uh, these are, these, uh, you know, everybody has their tradition and culture, yeah. which is, with all due respect, that's their choice. Uh, and that's their belief. And I'm nobody to tell them whether they're right or wrong. Whatever works for them. Yeah. As long as they don't impose it on other people. Yeah. Right? Mm. And we can then do it harmoniously. What I do is I, I need to do what works best for me to race. So if that works, if they think that, that gives them the energy, let them do it. I've been into that car before of course not this one but i raced with ismail otega i was a co-driver and then we rode like five times how safe is that car of course i left as i entered because everything was uh safe but on some days we see these cars rolling over and over and over but how safe are they to a person watching out there he's never been into that car it depends which car you're in and it depends the amount of research that's been put into the car. And based on the amount of research that's been put into the car, that determines the safety aspects. So my car is fully FIA regulated. It's not, it's the only thing, it's not homologated, mm. which is the only thing with it. That's why I, I lose points. Uh, but if you look at the R5s, they've got huge amount of research that go into them. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, uh, before we conclude off, uh, where do you see motor rallying in the next years? And of course, uh, if everything is open, where do you want it and uh, how do you see it? I mean the sport in the country. Mm. Mm. Well, I'd, li I'd like to see us being able to get an ARC championship for one of the Ugandan drivers. I think since Lumala, we've not got one. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, and it's only Lumalandi Muhanji that have won it. Correct. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the late Hirji was on the right track. Yeah. But unfortunately, he met an accident. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think, look, what the Uganda Tourism Board and the government needs to understand is this, by taking Uganda and winning anywhere in the world, you're putting Uganda on a map. Yeah, absolutely. On a global map. Absolutely. Where people want to now come to Uganda. Because everybody wants to associate themselves with winners. Nobody wants to associate themselves with a loser. <laughs> of course. Right? Yeah. So if you have Ugandans who are going on an international event, we must make sure we're going there to win, not to participate. Because that's what's going to give this country the recognition it needs. That's what's going to get people to want to come to this country. Yeah, just like we saw recently, these Olympians that uh, won medals Correct. in Olympics, Cheptege, Kiprimo, and all those guys, uh, the way they did advertise the nation is the same way you want drivers to do. Correct. And you see a Ugandan driver in the WRC very soon? Personally, no. Not because they don't have the talent, but I just don't think we have the organization to get to that level. We can't even, we can't even, we can't even hold Pearl of Africa. And uh, that's just the start of it. <laughs> We're already on a yellow card. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because okay. we've had issues with the uh, part of Africa as well. We had issues because we neglected the standards, not because they don't like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think we have one of the biggest fan bases of uh, motor rally in the world. In Africa. In the world. In the world. And then we need to follow those standards and have these rallies back here. Correct. Yeah. And if we're not careful, we're going to end up losing Pearl of Africa also. Don't I take it lightly. That used to be a Burundi rally. We got it from Burundi. So, around East Africa, we should remain with the Gorilla in Rwanda, and then the Safari in Kenya. Eh, then you guys need to work hard to ensure that we still have our part of Africa rally here. Because as drivers at the Motorsport Fraternity, and everyone, that's one of the rallies yeah. uh, where we see some of the big machines, the big drivers come all the way from wherever they've been to Africa. Because I've real, I mean to Uganda, because I've realized that uh, before the, even the yellow card, some drivers were ignoring coming here after maybe... Yeah, because our safety is rubbish. It's a joke. Our safety is a joke. Me as a Ugandan, mm. it can be fixed. But first thing is, let's accept it's not serious. Let's stop hiding and blanket covering everything. Let's first accept we have a problem. Mm. Once we can accept we have a problem, mm. Mm. let's sit down and say what's the solution and how are we going to handle it and what budgets do we need to handle it. Yeah, I understand. And I think uh, it's not very late for FMU, the clubs, the drivers, and of course the everyone associated with motorsport, including government, Uganda Tourism Board, and everyone. Uh, to make sure uh, that we have everything safe and in place to ensure uh, that we have safe running here. And then, quick fire ones. Sebastian Loeb or Peter Solberg? Mm. They're both, both just different drivers. I like both of them, to be honest. Uh, but I've not been able to watch enough of, of WRC. You see, my business comes first to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And balancing rally and business is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I'm trying to manage... Business is a passion of mine. Rally is a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. I do love rally a little bit more because it's mm -hmm. exhilarating. It's a sport. Mm -hmm. But rally is quite expensive and therefore I need to concentrate on my business to fund it. Uh, where a lot of professional drivers just focus on one. Because everything is in place for them. Correct. They have uh, those automotives having their cars around, uh, fueling and everything like that. Correct. And then uh, growing up, you said uh, you knew about and watched some of the best Ugandan drivers. If I may ask, Chipa Adams, Karim Hughes, Charles Muhanji, Moses Lumara, or Emma Kato? Oh, again, and all of them. I like all of them. I think each of them had a unique technique, <laughs> right? But to me, Chipper Chip is the one who did it for me. I think he was the, the, the corner master. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, he, he, didn't, he didn't drift. He was neat. He was clean. 
and that's what made him win a lot of events. And by the way, he he, he really dropped out. Dropped out. Correct. He rarely dropped out. Emma, a lot of speed, but of course, he usually rarely finished. Uh, Mohanji did win the ARC. Lumara was also smart. Yes. And then uh, Charlie Rubega as well. So, no choice, but you all love them. But of course, that pick for Chipa. Chip because Chip. of the way. He I, I think Chip and me had a special relationship because every once a month he used to come pick me up from school in his rally car. Sure. Yeah, so it was like... Uh, You're not afraid of speed then? No, no. That's what got me maybe into the speed I have. I just was okay with it. <laughs> I even used to sit on his spare tire and he used to go. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Formula One. Yeah. Lewis Hamilton or Veto? Oh, Hamilton all the way. Hamilton all the way. Yeah. Hey, yeah. That's a cheap one. So yeah. have you been into Ham Ham Hamilton is one of my, uh, my wife's... Uh, Favorite? mother's clients oh. in in UK. He goes to get his eyes checked at that uh, opticians. Well, he used to. I don't know if he still does. Uh, so he's from an area called Stevenage in England, which is where my wife's uh, practices, my wife's family's practice. Okay. So I, I'll have to be biased and say uh, Hamilton, go on. Ever been close to him for no, a chat? No, not personally. Never. No. And then, uh, of course, south from motor rally. Yeah. How much do you know about Ugandan football? Not enough. Not enough. But you've heard about Villa Express or KCC? Ah. I think Villa because it's been around for longer. It's, it's a renowned club. KCC only picked up recently, <laughs> the last five years. <laughs> and surprisingly, doing well. Villa is the youngest of all those clubs. Really? Yeah, because it was formed uh, 75, Express 69. Yeah. And KCCA, I think, uh, I've forgotten the year, but yeah. Villa is the youngest. Sure. And perhaps because most of the people of your, should I say culture, have associated with Villa a lot. Okay. So you're a Villa fan? I would say, yeah. Oh. Why not? <laughs> and for the, rugby, heathens. Heathens. And then uh, cricket? Cricket, I don't follow so much. You don't follow that. cricket? No. Yeah, that's uh, a shock. That's racist, because I'm brown. Uh, no, 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 not that. <laughs> but <because laughs> I know that, but uh, uh, most people of the Indian origin, cricket is the sport. You know, my family is now in Uganda for three generations. Actually, you're more Ugandan than all those other things. I know more about Uganda than I know about <laughs> India. My and family has been here since 1903, so uh, the, the skin is just a color. Yeah. You're more Ugandan than Indian. If I put you in India for three generations, you think you know anything about Uganda? No, no, yes. no, no, no. Because if you, like you said, your dad is born here, your mom, and my grandfather uh, was born here, and I'm also born here. Uh, three generations of birth in Uganda. You're more Ugandan than everything, and then uh, entertainment. You've heard about Jose Chameleon. Yeah. You've heard about Bobby Wine, Kenzo, and of course Bebe Cool. Mm. Who is your favorite artist? Well. To be honest, I, I, I really like uh, Waiki Bender. Mm. Uh, I really like Waiki Bender. I think he's, he's very educated. And he doesn't get in this riffraff like everybody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's quite a, a conservative, professional. professional. Mm. He's actually a chemical engineer by profession. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I think he did, his, he did his, his, his degree in Algeria, if I'm not wrong. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh. And so he's quite intelligent. He's built a brand. He's not, uh, he doesn't degrade himself to, to other levels of, of, of other artists. Mm. Uh, and he carries himself very well. Uh, I, think also, I think also Eddie Kenzo, he, he's a good guy. Mm. Uh, Bebe Cool has, I, 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 my, my wedding song was one of his songs because I, uh, I, I told him, I said, this is your best song every day, love you every day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, a big one. I think that was his best song in his, his history. It actually made it global. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, we have a lot of talent here, you know. But uh, Sanyu FM is now opening uh, an arm where it's going to be helping people do the recording. We're going mm. to use one of the studios okay, that's as a, a recording one. studio. That's a good to one. To see how we can get our own production going and to see how to promote these artists domestically. And then uh, finally, 
of course not finally, but uh, close to getting done. Away from uh, rallying, we've not seen a lot of sponsorships coming to sports uh, from the local area. Of course, we've had uh, Victoria University, they had a football club, and uh, we've seen somewhere in the entertainment, but of course not in sport. Uh, when, how soon are we seeing, say, uh, Kampara parents, uh, Victoria University, Previously, they had a football team. They're getting one again. They've started up a basketball team as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've watched. Uh, you've heard about it? Mm. Yeah, we bought a basketball club. Mm. We've converted the name into Victoria University Basketball Team. Mm. Uh, we've got Woodball. So, Victoria University is going to take the lead for us, and then we'll see where that takes us. And then we'll see uh, how, how it's run. And then if we want to grow further, then we see how to do that as well. And then any chances of... Uh coming out to sponsor other clubs away from just being part of the Victoria University thing? Uh, let's see. Okay. Right now, until they can organize themselves, I'm not going to participate in anything that's not organized. So this is a message to all the federations, sports clubs, and everywhere, not just motor rally. Not just motor rally. As long as there is organization. Don't count us in. As long <laughs> But you know, it's, it's unfortunate because they, they, they also benefit from the disorganization. Yeah, yes, most do. Yeah, most do, and uh, but we're not going to grow to that level where it's a national, you know. Even here, when you hear SP, S, 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 SC Villa is playing KCCC, it's, it's not like the whole city stops. Yeah, yeah. In UK, if you have uh, Liverpool playing Manchester United, Merse, Merseyside and Manchester is on a on a it's frozen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You will yeah, not yeah. see business, the shopping malls will be empty, people will be in the bars, people will be in their the homes. The football stadium will be packed. There's so many activities just around football because there's that die-hard passion because they've grown that fan base to that level. It used to be like that in the 90s and early 2000s, but of course, this organization uh, did chip in because Villa Express KCC playing against each other used to bring the whole city to a standstill. It's no more time to organize and then we have sponsors chip in. And right. uh, finally, a message to the Rajiv Rally team and uh, the motor rallying fraternity out there, especially in these hard times. I think let's stick together. Uh, let's sit, let's resolve our issues. Let's accept our issues first and resolve them. Um, and to the fans, let's be patient and let's see how people can organize themselves to get on a, onto a better platform and, and, and let's get the sports up and running again. Thank you so much for all the support you've given me since I've joined the sport. I know my joining has been quite controversial. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> um, it's been uh, a whole roller coaster, hurrah. Uh, but really, even the drivers, you've really been supportive towards me. Um, it's a lot of people who, who politicize within people, but when you deal directly with people, you yeah. realize there are no issues. Uh. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much to everybody. And, and let's continue. We want to see the fan base every year at least Growing. doubling, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for accepting our invitation to have you on this show. And to everyone out there at Cow Sports, thanks for watching. Always keep it with us on all our platforms. Thank you. See you soon again.